So, so going from managed hosting to your own setup. Um, oh, this was from Camp Colorado presentation. I'm here. Um, that's me. You can uh, get a hold of me different ways. Um, sl at usa.net. I just put the simplest one there. It's not my business one, but that's the easiest one to remember. Um, so, who who is actually managing in here? Who's actually managing their sites on their own infrastructure today, just by a show of hands? Instead of uh, kind of, yeah. So instead of using like how many people are using Pantheon, Acquia, or Platform S? Okay, so everybody here. Okay. So so, and nobody's recording this. But how many people are thinking about? moving to their setting up their own infrastructure. Okay. All right. So so this is this is great. This is going to be very relevant to you guys. Um, it's it seems difficult. It's not that difficult if you know how and we'll discuss how. So so understanding the options, the pros and cons, that's what we'll cover today. Um, and then uh, what kind of effort, costs, and risks are involved? That we'll we'll touch on that. Um, you know, there are many ways of migrating and consolidating your site, so we'll talk about that. And then uh, we'll just look at three ways of doing it, from simple to complex sites, and we'll focus on how uh, to move your sites to the different platforms, right? To those three different platforms, so AWS, DigitalOcean, and Azure. Um, but the same things can be applied to other platforms as well. It's essentially the same methodology. Um, target audience, this is uh, it. I'm just kind of covering the, the, the description for the, for the session. Uh, the three ways, uh, the, the DIY way is, uh, we'll, we'll cover that. This is, I recommend this for smaller sites uh, that are easy to do and easy to manage. Uh, how many people here are managing small sites, like personal sites and things like that? Okay, so we'll touch on this. It's, it's fairly straightforward and easy to do, so you'll, you'll find that very easy to do. Um, Drupal Forge is a new service that we just started. It's set up as a nonprofit. Um, it's a free service. You can use that to actually create a dev site, deploy it to your own VPS. So that's another free thing you can use in any version of Drupal. You can start using that. So that's another option. Uh, and then uh, Dev Panel is the engine behind Drupal Forge, which is the enterprise version uh, of the of the sauce, basically. So, and then that's that runs all. Uh, you know, Kubernetes, auto-scaling, stuff like that. So, so I'll talk about those three different things today. Okay, so the DIY uh, using LightSail, DigitalOcean, or, um, or Cloudways, those are the three ways to do it. Essentially, it's, no, you, you might have already done this if you're running this yourself. Uh, you, you go get a VPS, you create a Drupal site, you use backup and migrate. If you're running it somewhere else, just use backup and migrate to move your site into the new VPS or into the new Drupal instance. Um, and then set up Cloudflare with CDN and then, and then change your DNS. Okay. So the, uh, a lot of people try and skip this Cloudflare CDN, and which is a, I think which is a big mistake. You try and go directly to the site and it requires too much configuration, too much setup. So if you use Cloudflare, it makes it super simple to run your site. It actually makes your site faster, and it gives you all kinds of protection as well. So, so on LightSail, which I like a lot because it makes installing Drupal very easy. So when you go through the LightSail process, it actually you select the Linux server, and you select uh, Drupal from here and just kind of follow the prompts and it installs it for you. Okay, so it selects the VPS, you select the size of the VPS, you select the Linux distribution, you select the Linux, or select Drupal, you select the size of the VPS, 
and it'll install everything for you. And then once it installs it, then you just use Backup and Migrate to move your site to it from your local into your new site. Yeah. So that's that would be that would be the the process I would recommend. On DigitalOcean, they used to have an installer. So, but they don't today. So, so but they have uh, they have uh, instructions. So you can follow the instructions, or you can use Cloudways. Okay, so you can follow their instructions, which, uh, you know, it's uh, is there, but I would say use Cloudways, and Cloudways can. It's it's a deployment service. You can actually pick any type of application. You can pick Drupal, WordPress, uh, Magento, Laravel, uh, and you can pick any platform you want. And you can say, I want to deploy this application on this platform. And you pay them. You pay Cloudways. They charge you. They pay the provider. And then they'll, pro they'll actually deploy the application for you. And then you pay them, and they'll make a slight markup on the, on the, uh, on the hosting. Okay. So it's a very good service. Uh, it, it doesn't give you the whole dev test live environment, but it's a very quick way to deploy to any VPS that you want, um, you know, easily. Yeah. And, and it supports a whole bunch of applications as well. Okay. So, and then, and then anywhere you deploy, I would always, I always recommend using Cloudflare. And you just, what Cloudflare does is you get a VPS with an A address, uh, IP address, you put that in Cloudflare, and then you take, your, you take your domain name, your URL, you put that in Cloudflare, it connects the two, and it gives you a CDN in the middle, it speeds up your website, it caches all your files, uh, it, and it gives you DDoS protection. So, so it takes care of all the... Uh, the matching up of the IP address, it takes care of the DNS, it takes care of CDN, everything. So you don't have to worry about it, and it's free. So for personal sites, you know, it's their personal plans are free. And even if you're running a small site for business or whatever, it's free. Uh, we have medium sites running on it for free. So, okay, any questions on that? All right, cool. So Drupal Forge is the new thing on the block. Uh, have you guys used Simply Test Me? Anybody here? Okay, one person, two, one person. Okay, have you used Git Pod or Drupal Pod? Anybody? No. All right. So this is with Drupal Forge. You can uh, you go to DrupalForge.org. You can create six-hour sites okay, with or without. Cloud dev environments. So, anybody here use VS Code? Okay. So, in Drupal Forge, you can get, if you select the cloud dev environment, you get VS Code in a browser. And you get PHP My Admin in a browser. Okay. So, you can actually, you don't have to create a local dev environment. You can do all your coding in the browser. You get the SSH terminal, you get drag and drop SCP or SFTP, and so on. So you get your whole cloud dev environment. It's preloaded with Composer. It's preloaded with Drush. Everything you need is pre-set up, pre-configured, ready to go. Uh, and it's for six hours. You get the cloud dev environment. And then you can keep extending it if you want. So after six hours, it automatically goes to sleep. And then you can keep extending it as you want. Once it goes to sleep, you can come back to it. You can unpause it. You can resume it, and then you can work on it again. Yeah. And then it goes to sleep again, and then you can come back to it later, and you can unpause it and work on it again. And then when you're done with it, and you like it where it is, you can share the URL. Other people can come look at it. When you're done with it, you can actually connect a VPS from DigitalOcean, from Linode, from AWS. And then you can take your dev site from Drupal Forge, and then you can deploy it to that, to your VPS. And that becomes your production server. And the same thing you did before where we said connect your uh, uh, Cloudflare to it, to your VPS, you, you follow the same procedure, but this becomes a place for your dev site. 
Uh, and the dev side, you can keep it paused, you can keep it sleeping, and then next time you want to update your production site, go over here, you wake up the dev site, you work on it, you can redeploy it back to production. Yeah. So this is a good process to follow. Um, it's, it's set up as a nonprofit. There's a bunch of companies supporting it. There's a bunch of individuals uh, in the community supporting it. So, so it's all volunteer operation in the back end. Uh, the technology is DevPanel. We're contributing that as part of our contribution to this project. Okay. But that's essentially that's a nonprofit project that we've started. And it's free service like you would have free software. Um, and we call it disposable Drupal sites, um, Drupal dev sites. So after six hours, it goes to sleep. You know, it doesn't cost you anything. It, uh, but I think right now, it's if you don't use it for like 30 days or something like that, we send you a message, and then it's like if you don't log in, it gets deleted. But if you keep logging in every 30 days or so, it saves your site for you. Um, Auto paused, invite your team. You can collaborate with other people, share the URL, deploy it to any VPS, and maintain Drupal Forge as your dev site. Does not do production hosting. Okay, so that's that's the only caveat is that it's free. Does not do production hosting. Only dev sites. Um, I'll give you a um, quick demo. It supports all the different versions of. Um, Supports all the different versions of Drupal, so you get Starshot, OpenY, Umami. Um, so I love live demos, but they always crash on me. So uh, here's a recorded thing. So you say try it, and you can select one. You say try it, try it free, and. Uh, and then we took away, so this is an old recording. If you're trying the site builder version, you don't have to register. You don't have to provide any information. It just gives it to you. Yeah. So, but if you are, if you want a developer version, then you have to provide your uh, Drupal login information or the Drupal site information. So if you, have, you need to have a Drupal.org uh, username. So. It's, it's only for the community members. Um, you'll get an email saying it's, it's building it for you. Um, and then I think you get another email that says, OK, the site is ready. And, and then once the site is ready, it gives you the dev environment, uh, the application URL, and the login username and password. So this is this is without the dev environment. I'll go to the I'll go to the next one, which is the one with the dev environment. And it starts off the same way. You select a application. You provide your information, and you get an email that has your application URL and it has the dev environment URL as well. And when you log into the dev environment, um, you'll see if you had built other, so you can build a lot of different applications as well. So if you have built other applications, let me expand this. If you had built previous applications like other versions of Drupal 7, Drupal 10, Drupal 11, you'll see that list of other applications uh, as well. You can have multiple branches. This is the main branch. You click in it, and you'll see this. This is your application URL. You go back. You can actually select. You can generate a token. You can go into VS Code, and you can go into PHP My Admin. You have to actually enable that one. We'll build it out. In VS Code, there's Composers built in, and Drush is built in. So there's Drush. And oh, 
the other interesting thing is this works just like a live local dev environment. So I'm an index.php. I'm going to put in uh, PHP info and a die command. So as soon as I put that in, without saving it or committing this code, if I go to the if I go to the Drupal site that was created and you reload the page, you'll see those changes right away. So this is a this is a the cloud dev environment works just like the local dev environment. So that's your cloud dev environment. And that's essentially that's the cloud dev environment that you see when other people talk about cloud dev environment. That's how it works. Um, PHP my admin. Have have you guys like have you guys used PHP my admin here? All right, so that's pretty much how it is. So same experience. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here. Okay, the other things you can do here, um, you can do your backups and download the code if you're using DDEV. How many people use DDEV here? Okay, so you, this is compatible with DDEV. You can download the code. You can use it with DDEV. Uh, if you're maintaining stuff online, you can turn on security, so it puts in HT access lock. Uh, you can extend the timer like we talked about. And uh, you can pause and unpause your site. And I think, and you can delete your application. So if you're done with it, then you can just go in and delete the application. And I think that's about it for the dev environment. Yeah. Oh, and then deploying your site live to DigitalOcean. If you want to do that, this is just an example. Um, I'm going to expand this to full screen. So this would be your website. You go in, you connect your VPS. So you buy a VPS from DigitalOcean or Linode or any place else. Um, I'll create a droplet here. Have you guys used DigitalOcean? Um, how about AWS LightSail or Linode? No? Linode? Okay. So you can buy these VPSs for cheap, like $5 to $12, you know, and you can run Drupal on it. So I'm just buying, I think, a $12 server or yeah, a $6 server here. And then get a SSH key. Just using my key. I'm going to forward this through. So I wait for it to spin up. I connect my VPS that I just created. And, and then you deploy to it. So when you use Cloudways, Cloudways skips all of this stuff. It does all of this stuff for you. So it buys the VPS, it connects it for you, and it deploys it for you. And you pay and you pay Cloudways. Drupal Forge does not do that. So in Drupal Forge, you have to buy your own VPS yourself, and you pay yourself. But you have to move all the keys and connect the VPS yourself. Um, once it's connected, you can go to your VPS. Your VPSs will show up here, and then you can deploy to it. And once you've deployed to it, then you can connect your uh, uh, Cloudflare and just manage your sites from the VPS. Your database and everything is running on the VPS. If you have a if you have a bigger site, get a bigger VPS. If you have a small site, get the small VPS. But these are managed on VPSs. So these are servers, not Kubernetes. If you want Kubernetes, then that's the next section basically. So <clears throat> I'm going to stop on this one. Any questions on this? This is on AWS LightSail. It's about the same process. Yeah. So what's the what's the artifact that comes out of Drupal Forge? Is it like a Docker image? Is it? Yes. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So Docker image and MySQL database is sent over there as an image as well. I think. How does it deal with files? Like. Yeah. The files. files yeah. The files are moved over there as well in the image. So. All right. 
So it's part of the image. The files are. Part of I, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when you when you upload a file, that has to regenerate an image to be to be transferred over. Is that? Uh, when you upload a file to the production environment, it does not. To so uh, like the dev environment. To the dev environment, then, and you push it. When you redeploy it, it asks you, "What do you want to send over? Do you want to send over the, the, the code, the database, and the files?" Or so you have to checkbox what you want. So you can deploy just the code if you want. So the next time you want to redeploy, you can redeploy just the code, the code and the files, or the code files and the database. What if you want to go the other way from production back down to a dev environment? You can't do it. No. So, so <laughs> that's lacking. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, Acquia, at least maybe in the last year and a half, has something similar where you can. It's got VS Code, PHP, MyAdmin, all through a browser. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem I ran into is we have a very large website, and when I tried pushing from this like virtual IDE to our dev site, it just timed out because it still has PHP timeout limits. As that, does Drupal Forge have any kind of limits like that? No, Drupal Forge uses Dev Panel on the back end, and we have not run into that. We we run large sites. Uh, we have not run into that that type of limit. Uh, we don't use PHP in the back end like uh, we use Terraform and we use Ansible. So those are the technologies we use in the back end. We don't use the PHP stuff to move things around. Because I think they do like drag and drop type of stuff and things like that. And that yeah. We're actually enterprise, so we have Into your account, um, whatever account you connected, AWS, Azure, DigitalOcean, creates infrastructure in there, hosting infrastructure, Kubernetes, auto-scaling cluster, managed database, and so on. Everything that we create is all managed infrastructure. Uh, by managed infrastructure, meaning the provider, DigitalOcean or AWS or Azure, they manage that infrastructure. So it is guaranteed by them. The SLA is given by them. So it's very high reliability uh, that comes with it. So, and then with with the dev panel, you create uh, you can create unlimited sites, manage your custom domains, you get free SSL. Um, the cut. Are you guys familiar with Kubernetes? How many people are familiar with Kubernetes? Okay, so Kubernetes, you know, it grows and shrinks automatically. So you you set up auto scaling and it automatically grows and shrinks. So if you create more sites, automatically grows. You as you delete sites it shrinks down your cluster. So you save on your expenses on your hosting. Um, and then the whole model for DevPanel is you pay your you pay your provider directly. So uh, same thing with Drupal Forge as well. You pay your provider directly. Um, but this is this is how you create your set up connect your accounts. Uh, these are the three providers that are supported. There's a concept of there's a concept of workspaces. You create your workspace. This is the container for all your projects, all your people, all your resources, and then inside that you can create uh, projects from scratch or projects from templates. And your project list shows up here. Um, you can manage multiple branches. And you can deploy the branches, and the deployed branches show up here as deployed. And then you can take any branch from your Git repo, and then you can deploy that. Um, for any branch that's deployed, you can turn on, you can enable VS Code, and you can run VS Code in the cloud. In your browser, you can enable PHP My Admin, and then you can run PHP My Admin. There's your URL for the, for the app. And share it with other people, and then there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do. There's your VS Code. Whenever you run VS Code, it comes built in with Composer and Drush, PHP My Admin, and attach multiple custom domains, um, invite people to collaborate with as administrators or as developers. Here are the different templates. So, all the templates that I showed that we looked at in Drupal Forge. So those templates plus more. So there's WordPress, Joomla, 
um, and there's other ones like Magento and things like that as well. All right, so that was that was Dev Panel. So that's the third option of deploying it. Um, for agencies, there is a there is a free plan. We used to have a free plan for a Dev Panel. We took it off recently. Uh, it was it was getting to be a bit much. So, but for agencies, we still give them a free plan uh, as long as they provide the 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 first level of support. And and so as long as they're providing the first level of support for their customers, they can use Dev Panel for free to their for their customers. Um, but we used to have a hundred dollar plan. We used to have a, a free plan. We took those off. So we're pretty much going after the. Right now, we're going after like a thousand dollars and up customers per month. Um, any questions on that? What's what's the minimum requirement for the server that you'd be running? Um, on on for Dev Panel, what you need is uh, if you're running on DigitalOcean, you can run it on a single node. Uh, you can create a single node cluster, so you can the smallest infrastructure on DigitalOcean you can run is one node and one managed database. Together, it's $48 a month. Okay. Uh, we recommend a three-node cluster uh, with a managed database. So it comes up, you know, minimum would be like around $150, $200. Uh, same thing with AWS. If you use AWS, uh, a good setup with a three-node minimum with a managed database is about two, $200. So for two to $300, you can have a nice setup with, you know, about the two to $300, you can run about 15 websites on it um, or 15 applications on it. And I'm not talking big applications, but 15 applications on it. And when I say applications, that actually includes the dev environments as well. Yeah, so it's the production, dev, stage, test, whatever. So 15 applications. Okay, so. there it goes. The recording's up. Okay, question. Is there something in the in the interface to pull a database down to a designated dev site, or would you do that through command line or workbench? Yeah, no, it's it's in the interface. So when you're cloning sites, you, you can do that. You can say whatever application you want. You can clone sites down from that application. Um, so you can clone, you know, you can clone sites. It's pretty much like what you would expect from Acquia or Pantheon. We we say we have more functionality uh, because we do things like blue green deployments. Are you familiar with blue green deployments? No. Are you? Yeah. So blue green deployments are you have two production deployments uh, side by side going. So when you create a new deployment. Uh, your old deployment is still running. And then, and then if there's a problem, you can switch back to the old deployment like that. Right? And, then, and then we do canary deployments. So when you do like a deployment, you can deploy it to a small group of people instead of a big deployment. Uh, you can do rolling deployments. So these are all like advanced type of deployments that other platforms don't support. Uh, so I, I like to say like Dev Panel is a platform to build platforms. <laughs> so more like Drupal Forge is what competes with Pantheon and Acquia, and Dev Panel was used to build Drupal Forge. So we build platforms, and when we go into when we go into big companies, they have they have custom applications alongside Drupal and other applications, and they want a custom platform to manage all their applications. So that's where that's when they use DevPanel to actually build out those custom platforms. Uh, so when we go into companies, it's not just for managing Drupal, it's for managing Drupal and their custom apps as well. And that gives them one platform that gives their developers one platform to manage all their applications. But that's the enterprise version. We're talking here about you know three ways to move your Drupal application into the cloud, and and this is just one of the options. So.
Does that make sense? Question. What, what is it like to migrate an existing site that already has like you know production database production files to to one of these services? And it seems like it's relatively easy to spin up something that's new. But then like if I've got things already, like how do I how do I get it started from a Pantheon environment, yeah. halfway environment to something else? So so if if you're doing it yourself, we we recommend using backup and migrate or something. You know, um, that that's. And then there are scripts that you can use to like pull out your data and then put your data into it. Um, I can I can rsync files, for example. You can rsync files, which is very easy. When we work with clients and we've moved their application from Acquia into uh, into AWS or Acquia into Azure, we have scripts to do that. So if you get stuck or something, feel free to contact us. We have scripts to do that. Um, and, and it's not to DevPanel in specific, it's to AWS or from Acquia or Pantheon into AWS or Azure, okay, and, and DigitalOcean for that matter. But it's essentially, it's using rsync, right, for the files, and for database and stuff, it's, it's AWS has tools to manage databases, so you have to export it and then you have to import the database, and I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. Uh, the the biggest problems we have is when you're um, when you're taking getting sites out of uh, Acquia, for example, right? They have custom modules that only work on Acquia, that are like really tightly integrated with Acquia and their backend services. So you have to like decouple all of that. You have to take that out, right? And you have to get the site working without all the custom modules. Um, we haven't run into that with Pantheon at all. So, uh, and then setting up custom services. So if you have custom integrations or custom services, but that's what, you know, when we help customers, that's what we specialize in, is customizing your environment, customizing all the integrations and security and things like that. So it, some sites you can do in a day or two some sites it takes, you know, a week, and the bigger complex sites it takes a month. So, you know, it depends on the complexity of the sites. But it's not, it's, it is not rocket science. It is not, like, it is just standard stuff. No, it's DevOps, which is, it's, for some people, rocket science. Uh, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I guess. Uh, you know, I've been doing DevOps since 90s. So it's, uh, you know, my first job out of business school was DevOps, because I was, I was actually doing, dev, like, I was helping companies on the side while I was going to business school doing all the DevOps stuff. So my first actual job in the 90s was DevOps. So, so it seems like the, the problem space that, that these tools solve is, is a lot, the, the sort of the, the pipeline moving code from development into production, and in some cases back from production back down to development, like the, on Pantheon, I don't know Acquia, but on Pantheon it's like the going from dev to test to live, or spinning up a multi-dev to be able to do some work, and getting that code into production. Um, but then th there are there are other services that are baked into things like Acquia, or, or that are like value adds that make it, like make an ecosystem of, of hosting, yeah. right? There's, there's hosted solar, there's, uh, you know, there's CDN, Manipulation that is beyond like just what you get with, with free Cloudflare. Um, there's like web application firewalls. These are all things that are sort of tangential to this. These are these are external to this to, to what this these solutions solve. Like you still yeah. need those things, but what those are things that you would configure with DigitalOcean or with Acquia. Or exactly. With, Acquia, with AWS. With AWS, because AWS has like I think over 200, 300 services now. Yeah. So these are all, and whenever we set up services for clients or whatever we recommend is that they set up managed services. And managed services means we don't set it up ourselves. If, if AWS provides it as a service, then you use that. And that mix, makes it so that you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night trying to fix something. If something goes down, AWS will fix it for you. Right, so RDS is their managed database. You don't, you don't want to set up your own database containers and your own database cluster and run it. Let AWS run their database. You're paying a little bit more for it, right? But if there's a problem, AWS will take care of it. And 
you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, there's never a problem. And if there is a problem, you know, half the internet goes out. Right, so, and, and you've seen that, like when there is a AWS problem, half the internet goes out, you know, there's a whole freaking region that goes out. So, so most of the time, there's never a problem if you're using managed services. But when there is a problem, there is a problem, right? And you don't feel bad about it because all your neighbors are out too, so. So yeah, there's, there's managed solar, there's, uh, you know, memcache is there, they have elastic cache, for example, so you use that. Uh, all the services you would need is there. The security is very, is extremely configurable. Uh, compliance, if you're looking for HIPAA, FedRAMP, uh, FERPA, whatever compliance you're looking for, all the compliance badges AWS has. You're running stuff in your own environment, GDPR. So everything that you, for compliance stuff, everything stays in your account. So you get all the compliance badges with it, right? So it's very, um, I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of benefits to running stuff in your own account. So if you guys are thinking about it, you know, it's cost effective, there's a lot of benefits to it, and now there's a, there's a dashboard that you can use um, if you're, you know, that's something you guys want to do. Uh, if you're an agency, then you can actually use it for free and use it with your clients for free as well. So, questions? How are we doing on time? Right at it. All right, good job. I impressed myself. All right, thank you very much. All right, there's my contact information. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to hit me up. I'm from Colorado and Drupal, Colorado. Come visit us next time we're having a camp. Free invite. We'll take you out for dinner. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Yeah.